Hello, it's Brett, the Mensa Mechanic. Today we're doing boats. 5.7 liter Merc Cruiser inboard outboard stern drive engine. And we are going to be replacing the last riser and manifold assembly. It's a twin engine boat. We've done three of the four, and we're saving the best for last. This is a manifold for eight cylinder standard Merc Cruiser. And the riser, now this happens to be Merc Cruiser's dry joint, they call it. And it has to do with these two water ports, which in the old castings, the water ran in a pocket right outside of the exhaust chamber. And now they've separated that quite a bit. The water flows through these cast-in pipes, basically. We also will be adding a spacer. This particular boat needs a very hard to get spacer. And when Merc Cruiser has it, most spacers are three inch or four inch. This happens to be 1.75 inches, which made the whole assembly much more expensive. So on to the boat. All right, we're on the boat. Things are a bit cramped here. We get the parts now. There are four bolts that hold the manifold on, and they're in line, and they screw into each of the four ports basically, and there are the four bolts. The bolts come with the kit. Always a good idea not to reuse the bolts, get new bolts. Also, this did not come with the kit. This is the water injection for the bottom of the manifold, cold water injected through there to cool the manifold. <laughs> Make sure when you put these in, you put those in before you put the manifold on. And when you do put those in, one faces one way and one faces the other way. And make sure when you put the manifold on the engine that this faces the direction that the hose is coming from. On my boat, that happens to be coming from the front of the engine. So this is going to face the front of the engine when this manifold goes on. But make sure you get these right, otherwise you'll be hating life. You can see there are two of these 5.7s in here and it's quite cramped. It's on a 28 foot boat. We've done three of the four. One, two, three. And we're on the fourth one, which is outboard on the port side, tight quarters back there. And uh, manifold first. Now, there's a little trick I like to use for the manifold. What you don't want to do is do anything to pinch or any, and, uh, in any way to form this gasket. And so these manifolds are heavy. They weigh probably about 50 pounds. And so what I'll do is I'll get one bolt started, the furthest one back without the gasket. Then I'll get the other bolt over here started with the gasket, with the gasket uh, swung up away from the rest of the ports. And once this is started by hand, I will unscrew this one, get the gasket back in place, screw it through the gasket, and now the gasket will be secured at its outermost points these will line up automatically, and then I can finish bolting the thing up. Now one of the things that I did, and that you need to do, is there was gasket residue on these ports down here. We're looking at the exhaust ports from the head. So I brought a wire brush down here. Remove these first so they don't get scratched by the wire brush. And then wire brush all the gasket off of here. And uh, this is a good time to replace the spark plugs. You're doing these risers and manifolds maybe every five to seven years. And so that's a good time to replace the plugs, which I did. They're harder to get to with the manifolds back on the engine. And so, manifolds first. As I mentioned, this thing is heavy. It's going to take some uh, muscle to get it started. We're going to get it started right back here. This bolt right back here, if you can see it. The camera may not be picking it up. Bolt right back here. This is the water injection hose. Get that kind of out of the way for now. When we come in here, it's going to be heavy. One bolt and the manifold. Here we come. in the manifold and we are coming with the manifold 
working around everything. Now, I'm going to let it rest on the spark plugs gently so that I can get both hands over here and so I can see this hole as I line it up. Just takes a couple turns to get it to stay. And we're doing this without the gasket. So we're just putting the just starting one bolt in one of the exhaust port holes. Threaded holes. There we go. Alright, so I'll let it sit carefully on the spark plugs. We'll get another bolt in the gasket. gasket is aluminized both sides. One side has a printed pattern, the other side does not. I have been putting the printed pattern up against the head and the other side against the manifold itself. So we find this far end bolt here. There. We feed the manifold of the gasket so that the bolt goes through the gasket, raise the manifold so the bolt goes into the head, and get this started. Just a couple threads, you need enough spacing to get that gasket to slide into place. Okay, now, here's the gasket, it's held on by one bolt, we just let it fall down into position, which it does, and we carefully hold this manifold on this end, while we remove this bolt by hand, let the gasket fall into place. Keep my leg right. All right, so the bolt is off. Gasket into place. Gasket is in the bolt hole now. Put the bolt back in. And there you have it. We got it started by hand. These are 9 sixteenths inch bolts. The other two bolts. I have to feel my way a little bit. Can't get my head around. One. Two. Like any other gasket, it's a good idea to start from the inside work out. That way you're not creating a, a fold or a kink in the gasket as you as you torque the surfaces together. And it's a good idea to torque a little at a time. Bring it up snug to start. That's what I'm going to do here. Now, Mercury manual calls for 45 foot-pounds of torque. So you'll want to use your torque wrench to set these to 45 foot-pounds. All right, it's up snug. Bring it snug here. We'll bring it snug with the outsides, and we'll come back and tighten it up. Okay, now we're going to tighten it up, and I'm cheating, I'm going by feel on the torque. If 
but I recommend use a torque wrench so you're sure. And always go back over after you torque everything down one more time to make sure it is at the torque you expect. Now that one's not. Because tightening one of the other bolts brings the surf close, surface close together and can loosen one of the bolts you previously tightened. So you want to make sure you go back over your pattern until everything is what you expect it to be. There. Okay. Manifold is in. Not too bad actually. It's a little heavy, a little awkward bending over and trying to get in to this uh, cramped space. But uh, as far as only four bolts hold it together, it's actually fewer bolts than an automotive, which usually has uh, two bolts per port, so eight bolts. So if you remember, we put this forward because it meets the hose. Always orient your hose clamp so that you can get to it. Tighten it up and loosen it up too. So make sure the tightening nut is in the orientation where you can get to it. Get that all nice and snug. Let's tighten this up before we move on so we don't forget this. These are 5 sixteenths, but your size may vary. So I use a 5 sixteenths inch nut driver to tighten and loosen these things. It's quicker and, it's, and more accurate than a screwdriver. And quicker than a socket wrench. All right, bottom end done. Now we move up to the top end. All right, so we're gonna push this until it bottoms out right there. And we're gonna go ahead and snug these aft clamps up a little bit so they don't have a tendency, so they don't slide off on me. They're snug. All right, we are now ready to put the spacer in place. Here are your gaskets. You've got one that's flat both sides with wide holes on the water jackets. You got one that's got a little bit of an indentation. It's got a pinhole on one side and an open hole on the other. Our cruiser calls this a turbulator gasket. I guess it causes turbulence in the exhaust flow, which probably creates a bit of a vacuum as it goes through and helps uh, pull the rest of the exhaust out. This goes on top of the spacer. I'm going to set that aside for now. This goes in between the manifold and the spacer. There does not appear to be an upper or downside. It seems to be completely symmetrical. So you just want to make sure that the holes line up with the studs. The studs come with the spacer kit, so the studs are proper length for the spacer. Now the spacer also appears to be symmetrical with one exception. It has a water port opening that is plugged well, that plug has to be tightened up, but we're going to wait till we have some, have this in place to tighten it up. So I've been putting it in an orientation where the part number is readable, legible. So in this case, facing down. So part number down, and that may be what this pink dot means up. But this goes forward, for sure. This goes forward. Put that forward. Just line it up by hand. Set it on there gently, and now comes the riser. Now, be careful with the riser. The riser on this side of the engine is a little more difficult because you got this oil filter in the way, so you got to be a little more careful with it so you don't disturb your alignment that you just created there. And these things are heavy too, so take your time. 
what I do is before I make the surfaces, I get it started in here and lift this up a little bit so that I'm not touching the surfaces together to kind of get the rubber piece over top of the nipple where it goes. Set that back. I still haven't touched the surfaces together and bring it back. Now notice I haven't put the gasket in yet. The gasket between these two. Alright, now that it's in place slightly, now I'll put the gasket in place. Now, the turbulator bit goes up. Exhaust gas comes this way, creates turbulence around, which probably creates a vacuum and helps exhaust more. What's important though is this pinhole. This pinhole has to go over or under your water injection port right here. You can see it. Water injection port down low here. This has to go over it. You have water, hot water, coming from the top of the engine, being injected here. What we don't want is that water to be able to flow easily back down and compete, or backflow the water coming out, out of you want water flow up and out at this point. So water flow in, you want to block it from going back down to kind of force it to go up and out. This is most likely to vent any steam pockets that might generate in there so that they don't form and cause hot spots. But it's to block the water flow. And so it's important to put this underneath where your water injection is coming in. And the water injection comes from the top here, not from the spacer. So with this assembly kind of in place, I just grab this bottom hose, injection port, lift it up enough that I can slide the, spa the gasket underneath of it, line the gasket up, and then gently let that sit back down. All right, so now we got gaskets, both places, under and over the, uh, the spacer. Now it's time to kind of get everything lined up finally with the studs. You'll find these two studs here easier to thumb screw in. You want to start these by hand. These are also 9 16 inch studs. These are brand new, came with the spacer kit. So straight down in there. And it's encountering a little resistance on the bottom of the spacer with the gasket. So we just kind of slide things around gently until we feel it hit the hole, the thread hole. It hasn't yet. There. Maybe. And there's the thread. Back a little bit. that got it for sure and then this will help you align it second one on this side help you align it a little bit more and if you get three of them going you're pretty comfortable that you're going to get the fourth one easily after that so now we got them started Just snug them down a little bit make sure they're starting properly not cross threading snug it so we're sure we got all of these bolts started properly they're not cross threaded so now we'll snug it and you want to use an X pattern and you want to again like the manifold snug it gently uh, a little at a time don't go full torque these are also 45 pound foot foot pound torque do not want to go full torque. On any one of these bolts until you pretty much got them close to each other in torque. So a little at a time. If you're using a torque wrench, do probably three settings on your way up to 45 pounds. Maybe 15, 30, and then 45.
Okay, snug the last one. And then we'll start tightening. pattern get them all about the same snugness and we'll start tightening Back again, always check your torque sequence. One last time, make sure that everything is torqued as you expect. All right, that's that. Now, let's get this tightened up, and then let's not forget these. Don't tighten those up, we're gonna have a water leak. So, let's get those. First we'll get finished with the rubber coupler, get these fully tightened on the rear. Okay, they're tight. Now, trick to these things. These are 9 16 Hmm. Not a whole lot of Allen head wrenches that are 9 16 Those are pretty big Allen head wrenches. So, there's a little trick you can do. This happens to be a 9 16 inch bolt with a 9 16 inch nut tightened up right against it. Hmm, how about that? fits right into there. You just want to tighten this as much as you can. Just make sure you have enough threads with the thread seal into the bore to stop it from leaking. That's that one. And don't forget this one down here. We've got another one that's down on the spacer itself. So make sure you get the one that's on the spacer as well. Now you can tighten these plugs before you put the assemblies together if you want, but it's a heck of a lot easier to do this when it's assembled because it's held in place unless you want to put them in a vise or something, but then be careful you don't mar up the gasket surfaces doing that, which is why I wait till they're assembled. Forget the injection hose. Again, orient the clamp so you can get to it.
almost. Now, on both sides of these manifolds, these riders, are mounted various accessories. On this side, this is the whole shift and throttle assembly. It's mounted on a plate using th three one quarter inch, 20 standard quarter inch by 20 threaded uh, bolts or screws, depends on how it's set up. On this side is the computer. It's a computer for this engine. At least your engine may or may not have a computer, depends on what year it is. But you got this plate right here. This plate right here supports the computer. It also supports a set of relays in the rear. It also bolts three three bolts to here, and then the computer itself bolts three bolts to this plate. So the plate on first, and then the computer. All right, these are Torx screws. So they require a Torx bit. You just snug them up. You know, get them on. Don't over tighten. You don't want to break the bolts. But just snug them up. But you also want them to be tight enough that they're not going to back themselves out through vibration. One of the tricks I use is I use a ratchet with leverage that would be appropriate for the torque I want. So for a smaller size, use a quarter inch ratchet, small quarter inch ratchet. I can't get as much torque on that, so let's risk it over, over torque in there for breaking the bolts. Okay, that, that's in place. All we gotta do is pull the computer back off. It goes in there just like that. These computer bolts are stainless. 5 16 head. The computer sits on rubber mounts. Keep it shock isolated. It looks pretty bulletproof to me. These bolts have blue Loctite on them already from the factory. There's still some on there, so I just left it on there, but you might refresh yours. Again, don't over-tighten. Just get it down snug.